everyone, it's Miss Jody, and today I wanted to read one of my favorite books with you. It's kind of old, um, but it's it's another one that I really enjoy reading, and I think it's kind of funny. So I hope you enjoy it too. And it's called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs. So before you listen to this story, go read the story of the three little pigs, and then come back and listen to this one. So we're gonna read the true story of the three little pigs by A. Wolf, as told by John Skitska, illustrated by Lane Smith. Enjoy! True story of the three little pigs by A. Wolf. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, people would think you're big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. There are the wolf's ears. He's pointing off this way. Way back in Once Upon a Time Time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. Look, there's the sugar and he's measuring interesting looking cake, but um, we don't judge, do we? So, I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He built his house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house out of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into somebody else's house, so I called. Little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch, and I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and... I snuffed and I sneezed a great sneeze. Achoo! There's the pig disappearing. <laughs> I see his curly little tail. What do you think's gonna happen? And you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig. Uh, dead as a doornail. He'd been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw. So, I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. <laughs> I was feeling a little better, but... I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So, I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. And he had built his house of sticks. Look at there's a girl. I rang the bell on the stick house, and nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig! Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back. Go away, wolf! You can't come in! I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin! <laughs> There's the window. That's the wolf's tail. Here's his razor, and here, these must be, <laughs> these must be.
These must be the hairs on his chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth. But I sneezed a great sneeze and you're not going to believe it. But this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. And when the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail, wolf's honor. And look, there's the little pig's razor. Here's the pig. That's, that's the wolf's nose and his big sneeze. Now, you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. <laughs> I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. And he must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house of bricks. So I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig! Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf! Don't bother me again! That is pretty rude. This must be where he's talking through this little peak hole here. <laughs> Look at the end. <laughs> he's made out of sausages. That's appropriate for a wolf. Talk about impolite! He probably had a whole sack full of sugar and he wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. Ha! What a pig! I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. And I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again and the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin! Oh my! Look at his face. He looks very angry. The wolf's handkerchief has um, sheep on it. That's kind of funny. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when someone talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down the pig's door, and the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a great big scene. So here must be the reporters and the police. They're going to interview him. They're ready to, to stop the wolf. The rest, as they say, is history. And here's the Daily Pig newspaper. Big bad wolf. I'll huff and I'll puff. A.T. Wolf, big and bad. Red Riding Hood settles dispute out of court. <laughs> ah. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner, and they figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all that huff, puff, and blow your house down, and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. And that, my friends, is the end.